Now I'm back with the next tutorial in the Fresnel section. So this is a picture of the this is a picture of the Fresnel effect on a 3D object. This object was modeled using Slick's approximation of the Fresnel effect and some sort of specular reflection model working together. And from this image, we can see that there's an increase in reflectivity around the edges of the object, and it gets kind of, uh, there's more refraction in the middle of the object, so we don't really see the reflection as much. But we do have a separate specular highlight, and we also have a diffuse model here as well. So this is just an example of what uh, a BDRF using Slick's Fresnel would look like. Next I'm going to show you an actual example of what Fresnel will lo actually looks like. Here's the Fresnel effect in the real world. And you've probably noticed that there's a bit of a dis difference between the actual effect and the simulated effect. First thing you should notice is that in the simulated effect, the reflection is still visible um, to some degree in the center of the object and it's highly visible um, far away from the edge. In the real re reflection, we don't really have uh, the reflection of the environment spreading that far into the edge. We kind of do have some around here and some around here, but this is open sky. Uh, this is a reflection of the blue sky from above and that reflection of the blue sky allows the Fresnel effect to the reflection of the blue sky only is around the edges of the red half spheres it doesn't really go too far into the center as we get closer to the center the reflection of the blue sky kind of disappears and it's really only at the very edges that you see it. Even in a rougher red half sphere, we don't have that much um, reflection going into the sphere. It's still basically on the edges only. So this simulated sphere that's using Slick's or Fresnel is inaccurate because the Reflection is too intense, and it's not confined to the edges as it should be. Now, I have another shot. Of Here's another picture of the same object. By the way, these are my images. I got them from uh, a website that I'll link in the um, description. So, in this case, the reflection is not coming from the blue sky and the sun. This is a reflection probably taken underneath a tree or something. And so, we still have, um, we have a reflection of the ambient light in the area, and we also have a reflection of what appears to be a tree or something. But the strongest um, reflection is coming from the ambient light, and the reflection is getting closer to the center of the circle, but it's not... Um, you still don't see a reflection creeping that far in. So the Fresnel effect is basically only working on the edges of it. Um, but when we look at, let's say, a rougher material, um, you really don't see the reflection entering the inside interior of the sphere at all. We only see it around the edges. And it is quite a bit larger, especially with this being a rougher material. And in this simulation, I would say that this red sphere has a roughness between these two red spheres, but we don't have an, a very intense uh, highlight along the edge, and we kind of have the um, reflection, again, fading in too much. So the two problems with this six approximation is that the highlight on the edges is not intense enough and it's not falling off fast enough.
here's a third image of this same container and in this case the light source is actually being reflected off of the sand so there's a reflection that's picking up the color of the sand because the sand is reflecting light and it also I guess to some degree is also picking up the reflection of the sand as well because in all honesty um, when we talk about reflections oftentimes we talk about reflections of the light source or the, and that's what the specular reflection is but light sources may not necessarily be from some intense light like a flashlight or the sun light sources can also be from reflections of other objects and so the main light source in this picture is light reflecting off of the sand so since that's the light source if this light source was more intense and maybe the, the angle of this container was a bit different we might actually be able to get a separate specular highlight but for now the only highlight that we're getting is the Fresnel effect which is pretty interesting because I don't think that anyone who's trying to model the Fresnel effect in Unity would think about modeling the Fresnel effect only and leaving out the specular highlight as you can uh, regardless the Fresnel effect is again it very intense around the edges of the spears and falls off sharply as we get to the center of the spear. So in other words, this picture is just plain inaccurate. So the question is, what um, what can we do about this? And is this the only situation which Slick's approximation is inaccurate? Because in many cases, you're probably not going to be applying, applying Slick's approximation to a ball. You probably are pl planning on putting it on many different objects, including characters and vehicles and tables and things like that. So, let's take a look at the other case of Fresnel, that on a flat plane. So here's another artificial picture of the Fresnel effect. This time, it is on concrete and water. I believe this came out of, uh, I want to say it originally came out of Lux for Unity, but I'm not exactly sure if that's where this actually came from but um, when I looked into this a long time ago this was supposed to be a um, render based on um, the Fresnel effect using six approximation and so in this case um, we're having the Fresnel effect on water and we're also having it on the concrete and so I think the Fresnel effect on water actually looks pretty good here, besides the fact that I think that um, we're able to do too much transmission in the water um, in this far away from us. I don't think that we should be seeing much of any transmission at all. I think it should be pure reflection, even though this um, the reflection off of this um, building is... Um, reflection off of this building isn't all that bright I think the reflection should still be pretty much covering up all these lines so that's um, the first issue the second issue is the concrete so there's a question as to how bright Fresnel should be in the real world versus how it's modeled in six approximation. So let me quickly show you what I'm talking about. Okay, this is six actual approximation. And um, I believe in his original paper, he used F0. But... Um, so the first section is your reflection as uh, the reflectance. I mean, R zero, F zero is a reflectant at uh, zero degrees, and then the incident angle is the glancing angle with the the, or the viewing angle, or whatever you want to call it. And the BDF curve, I believe, is just an exponent that it has to be raised to. So the reflectance at angle zero which is R0 or F0 in the original paper is actually a um, property that an object actually uh, physically has. So glass has an R0 that's different than, let's say, concrete. And concrete has an, an R0 that's different from steel 
or from paper or from wood or from I don't know human skin they all have different R0 values and so um, generally um, the more shiny something is the higher its reflectance value basically what you would do in the Fresnel equation is that you would plug in the um, items actual reflectance value and then it should output a physically accurate result but there are some problems with six approximation when it comes to viewing a angles and the viewing angle issue, issue is, is what I think is causing the problem with spears it also should be causing problems with planes as well so in this situation right here which I'm pretty sure this was um, probably not done for unity this looks a little bit too um, complex and it is actually a pretty uh, realistic rendering even though I don't know exactly where it came from but in general the problem here is that the R0 that they probably plug in for this concrete may be physically accurate but it's not um, it's not producing physically accurate results and what I mean by that is that uh, it seems that and I know, I'm not exactly sure what engine this was that I came across this for, and I cannot seem to find the, the um, topic, but there was someone who was saying at some point that in their presentation of the Fresnel effect using six approximation uh, on some outdoor scenery when they were um, looking uh, at their scene and they had a very long road or sidewalk or something, and they were looking at it going towards the horizon they noticed that the highlights or the increase in reflectivity was pretty much heading towards infinity meaning that the highlight was being blown out completely sort of kind of like what you see happening back here in this picture the highlight is extremely high back here but even though this is in that a real picture there are some um there are some things about uh for now that allow it to reach its full blown out um, highlight but in some cases it should not have a full blown out highlight so I think the issue with for now is that it's only taking account of the grazing angle but it's not really um, taking too much account of let's say the angle that the light is coming from because even though this highlight is actually completely blown out back here and so you could be saying that what's happening is that as we're looking further and further back into the distance the light uh, the reflection is increasing and therefore getting brighter this is following slick's approximation but that's not exactly what's happening here you can clearly see that the light source is actually coming from the end of this corridor therefore because light follows the square law the actual amount of light that's reaching the hallway close to the camera is less than the light that's back here. And it's bouncing off of various things in the hallway and also being reflected back onto the floor. We noticed that the, bright, the, mo the brightest area on the floor would be closest to the light source and it would get um, increasingly dark as we get closer to the camera. But this floor is uneven, so you can also see that there's an area that seems to have a decrease in light here but then an increase in light over here in this picture the floor seems to be pretty even so we don't see too much of any variations in um, the Fresnel effect which is kind of strange given the fact that um, this area over here is a road and this area over here is a sidewalk so I'm not exactly sure what's going on uh, with the Fresnel effect in this picture. And also things do seem to be getting incredibly bright as we get uh, towards the horizon. And, and in fact, we can see some pixels over here are um, excessively bright, meaning that the highlight completely blew out. So the next question is, um, does this actually ever happen in physical situations where um, the highlight will blow out but the lighting is kind of overhead instead of being necessarily 
um, parallel to the viewing angle like it is back here because in this situation the light source is it is back there and that is explaining why it was kind of brighter over there if it was um, a spotlight or something but since this is the sun still can't quite say that it's excessively bright over here for the same reasons why it's excessively bright in this real image so let's go on to um, some actual examples of the Fresnel effect uh, and how it should look. So this is a really, really, really long road, basically out here in a desert. And so I've chosen this image because we can see pretty far into the ri horizon. And as we look into the horizon, you'll notice that we are not reaching... 100% uh, brightness. The road is not pure white back here. It's still, um, it's still less bright than the light source, which is the sun. But it is blown out. And we are having an increase in reflectivity as we're going further out. But still not to the extremes that we have here or to the extremes that we have in the other picture. And with this being an outdoor scene and the light not being parallel with the viewing direction, and again, because it's the sun and it's, um, it has more light scattering going on for our atmosphere and there's more, um, global illumination going on, um, you won't quite see the effect that you would have with the woman in the hallway. So we can't say that it's brighter back here because the sun is shining on this more. That's not quite how that works. The sun is shining on all this area equally, even though the sun is um, not directly above the road. It's kind of to the side of the road and also kind of facing the viewing angel angle. But as you can see, um, we are getting a six like effect, but it's not exactly how the six equation would um, predict it to be. Now, here's another picture that's using pretty much the exact same viewing angle, but the road is not becoming extremely bright. Well, you're probably like, well, um, so if we're just taking account, it, if we're just taking the viewing angles into account. They should look the same. Um, everything should get bright as we start looking further into the distance. You can see these two images are not the same, even though they basically had the same viewing angle. So now you have to say, so what else is going on in these pictures that's um, causing the Fresnel effect to appear in one picture but not in the other? Well, take a look at where the position of the sun is. The position of the sun in this case is pretty much overhead. It, and so with the sun being overhead and the viewing angle um, looking off into the distance and, you know, we're approaching a grazing angle as we're looking out there, we're not really getting that Fresnel effect. But we are here, and that's because of where the solar position is. Unfortunately, Fresnel's equation does not take lighting source uh, angle into um, consideration and so therefore we would see the Fresnel effect on a road like this even though in real life we would not see the Fresnel effect at least not strongly in all honesty the Fresnel effect is happening here but it's pretty much um, invisible to the eye so the thing about it so the thing is if you're trying to model a scene like this you don't want to have this type of Fresnel effect in a scene with this type of lighting so, basically, what we're going to do is when we implement our Fresnel effect in our shaders, we're going to use an approximation that allows us to manually um, adjust the Fresnel effect so that the Fresnel effect will not, um, will not appear in situations where it should not appear. It will not be strong in situations where it should not be strong. And when you and it will also take the lighting angle into consideration. So in other words, this Fresnel effect you know, that we're going to put into the shader should behave more like the physical Fresnel effect instead of 
how Fresnel, how Slick's approximation of the Fresnel effect would look. Now, uh, there's another example I want to sh show you about some of the pair of problems I want to show you about Slick's Fresnel approximations, especially when it comes to not taking the light source into consideration. So, before I show you the incorrect behavior of Fresnel on an object that's not a plane or a spear, I wanted to show you um, something that Slick Fresnel has in common with um, rim lighting. Situation you can see that their light source is over here and the shadows over there. Same uh, situation in this setup. You notice that the Fresnel effect seems to be appearing on uh, equal Fresnel on an area which is in the light source and is reflecting the environment and also on an area which is being self-shadowed and that is not in the light source. When we contrast this to a, a real image, you'll notice that the Fresnel effect only sh shows the light source and area that the light source is actually reflecting off of. And even though we do have a, um, a reflection of the general environment, we're, we actually do see no Fresnel in an area that's being self-shadowed. Here, 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 we see it over here. We kind of see some self-shadowing here, and we see some self-shadowing over here, and there's self-shadowing here, and also self-shadowing over here. There's no self-shadowing in this slick approximation. There's no self-shadowing inside of a crude rim lighting fake Fresnel shader either. So the next thing that I'm going to show you is how this can create an error on an actual object. Okay, so this is a character that was a demo for um, various lighting models. And so we are looking currently at um, a demonstration of inclu occlusion, but there's also a Fresnel effect on the character. Now keep in mind, the light source is coming from over here. When they remove the inclusion from the model, you, you see the Fresnel effect is very strong, and it also seems to be too strong on the side that should be self-shadowed by the character. And it looks especially weird on her nose. But this is actually using six approximation. Now, when there was a another occlusion map baked in, uh, the Fresnel effect on her nose kind of disappears because there's a, like there's like a cavity. Oops. Because there's like a cavity map up here. Without it, it looks weird. Well, for stronger occlusion map, it kind of dis kind of disappears. What's basically going on in this picture is the occlusion map is kind of removing Fresnel, it, the Fresnel effect in areas that it really shouldn't be that strongly um, appearing in. So the Fresnel effect is kind of too strong in this area. Well, it's kind of toned down with the the maps that they put on here especially along her cheek and along this side that's not facing the light. So this is without the, uh, with pure Fresnel. This is with a occlusion map. With stronger occlusion. With some, oh, with bent normals. So, What's basically going on here is they're kind of dampening the Fresnel effect to make it look more physically accurate. If you just use six Fresnel, you get some stuff that does not look physically accurate. 
So the question is, where are you using an approximation which you have to go to the trouble of throwing on an occlusion wrap and bent normals to fix? So my, so therefore my approach is to not go to the trouble of using occlusion maps, but just simply not use six approximation and Fresnel. We're also going to be applying a specularity map to the Fresnel effect. So the Fresnel um, effect is going to be taking the specularity map into account so that when we look at the Fresnel effect along a grazing angle on a character, it won't look um, won't look so plasticky, it won't look so sweaty. It's going to actually be broken up by the texture of the specularity map. In this case, they use a normal map to do this. Um, their normal map, of course, is going to be applied to the specular highlights and also the, to the Fresnel. But I want to make sure that the Fresnel is also picking up the um, specularity map because that allows you to do more tweaking because our shader is not complex it's not using what's going on in this um, demo here this demo here is using um, they're using a cavity map their uh, their cavity map was supposed to be for dealing with pores because they wanted to actually be able to physically model what they found in a photograph. And so they created a cavity map, but there were problems with it, so they had to do uh, some more adjusting. So they used um, a reflectance, they used reflectance as well to try and fix some of these problems. So you have a gloss map, cavity map, you have reflectance, some sort of special reflectance, reflectance map. You had, um, you had an ambient inclusion thrown in there. Um, and the ambient inclusion had a tint to it. So it was a color bleed, uh, ambient occlusion. Um, they had, I think, tried to fake subsurface scattering with this model as well. Um, they also blurred the subsurface scattering. They also tried to deal with, um, light transmitting through, um, flesh that's not, that's pretty thin. In other words, there was a lot going on with this model, but we are not trying to um, create something that's this realistic. And it's probably not really possible to do something like this with Unity anyway. I don't know what engine they were um, originally, you know, doing this with. We are we, but there are some things that we can learn from this. Um, demo and try and implement in, into our shader. So the first thing that we need to do in our shader is be very careful of how we use Fresnel and also allow the Fresnel effect to be able to pick up things like special maps. And in this case, our special map that we're going to be including is going to be the specular map. So we're coming to the end of the second tutorial tutorial in the series on Fresnel. This is just a tutorial. This is just another tutorial talking about how Fresnel behaves inside of gaming engines. And also this tutorial is help is meant to help you be able to spot what is and is not a physically accurate depiction of the Fresnel effect. So um, the next tutorial is going to be a little bit more on theory, but we're also going to start, um, coding.